Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back, Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer. Thank you so much for tuning in and taking the time to listen to uh, my perspectives on what's going to be taking place with the full moon in Aquarius and the Lion's Gate uh, activation, which actually started around the 26th of July and is really open until the 12th of August, but the 8th of August is the, the highest frequency point of activation, basically. So I'll talk about the Lion's Gate towards the end of this video. I just want to spend some time talking about the full moon in Aquarius. I feel this full moon in Aquarius is very loaded because, well, a number of reasons, but one reason is because, so in traditional astrology, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, okay? And its co-ruler is Uranus. In evolutionary astrology, it is Uranus uh, that is seen as the primary ruler of Aquarius. I usually pay attention to both because I think both Saturn and Uranus have an important role to play when it comes to the archetype of Aquarius, which is a, an air sign, a fixed sign, um, air, fixed, and what's the other word I'm trying to think of? I've, I've just forgotten. Um, so an Aquarian full moon, which is ruled by Saturn and Uranus, uh, which happens to be forming a square on the day that it's full to the planet Uranus, is really, really uh, drawing out and highlighting just the intensity of this full moon to begin with. Full moons, as we know, is the sun and moon opposite each other, happens every month. Um, and the full moon, of course, is always an illumination process. So things come to consciousness, things come to light, things come into our field of awareness. Now, Uranus and Aquarius are bodies of energy that correlate to the past and the future. Aquarius is not a sign that lives in the present. It's, it's frequency because it connects to uh, different timelines and, and time shifting and so forth. It, it basically lives in the past to some extent and largely towards the future. So what we're really looking at here is a full moon that is potentially going to activate material from the past because Uranus correlates to the long-term memory body, okay? Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. Mercury connects to the left brain and to the daily sort of memory of, you know, what, what did I do this morning? That's a Mercury process and thought. Whereas Uranus, long-term memory, dives in, opens up, activates past life memories, uh, memories from the past in this life and what it's working towards relative to its future. So having Uranus squaring this full moon is not an easy experience um, because it is a square aspect. So square aspects are dynamic, they're very active and they do provoke tension and sometimes conflict as well. So Uranus is the body that correlates to shock, unpredictability, uncertainty. It is the body that takes us out of the bounds of Saturn, our, our social construct of reality, into the territory of basically what is unknown. And the unknown territory, which is the future, is usually, most people usually have resistance to that because by our very nature, we like to feel secure and comfortable. Even if the, the security that we have attached ourselves to is not promoting our growth and evolution, we, we just we are creatures of habit and we, we don't like to feel uh, insecure. It does take tremendous courage to step into a field, into a path 
where you don't know the outcome. You don't know, you know, what will happen if you do X, Y, Z. So it is a very challenging aspect from that level. It is also very challenging because it has the potential to activate material from the past which can relate to experiences that had a process of shock or trauma, right? So in evolutionary astrology, Uranus correlates to trauma and the trauma is, it lives in the memory body within us, right? So it's, it's not so much the trauma to the experience as such, but it's more about the feelings that were generated through the experience of trauma and that's where the memory lies. So it, it is a very powerful full moon from that level because if, if we are not ready to process what comes up for us, we will shut it down. Okay, remember this full moon in Aquarius is opposite Leo, right? Leo is the heart center. Leo points us towards the galactic center. It's the core central sense of self. It's the self fully actualized and expressed. So it's very much in the now. It's very much in, in feeling and seeing what is happening right now. It's very centered, right? It's like the, the sun that we see every single day which lights up everything around us. We see that every day, right? It's part of our experience on a daily basis. But Aquarius is that component of ourselves that is, um, it has multiple levels to it. That's where Aquarius takes us. It takes us into this field of multiplicity where we can explore larger aspects of ourselves that might be uh, blocked, that might be, split off that might be fragmented right and that usually is the case for all of us because as we are here in this body we are not working through or carrying just what's happened in this lifetime but we are also working through and processing and healing what we've lived in the past as well because the past in in a weird sort of way lives in the present and the future lives in the present as well it's 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 a complex sort of concept to grasp but everything is now in truth but in terms of how we give um form uh, or shape to things we we bracket things in in timelines you know as in past present future we if we were to allow everything to come into our field right now as in from the past what we're facing right now in the present and what we are going to experience in the future we, we just simply would not be able to manage or cope so that's why when we have these particular astrological cycles or full moons or lunar eclipses they are always vantage points there are always opportunities to work through and process through material that we are ready to step into for our future or material from the past that we are ready to resolve and release um, some some really great keywords that i actually i have taken these keywords from an astrologer called jason holly i just did a a webinar uh, of his recently the webinar was on um, Aquarius and the myth of Aquarius and I absolutely love that web I just got so much out of it anyway the the main focus in that webinar was about the the myth of um, Ganymede and Ganymede was a prince of Troy uh, he was one of the most beautiful mortals on earth and he was basically abducted by Jupiter to be um, a servant to the gods to, to serve nectar to the gods so he he lived here on earth as the most beautiful mortal in that time and being abducted by Jupiter and being taken into the world of immortals he eventually became immortal he he eventually um, it, it's a complex story and it's it, it would take me a good hour to unpack it all but 
The reason I want to bring it in is because some of the key points that Jason made about this myth are really useful to help us understand the archetype of Aquarius. So let me just start with some key words for Aquarius. And these are really good keywords to consider when you are thinking about this full moon energy in Aquarius. So we're going to look at some keywords for Leo and Aquarius and, and the contrasting differences because when you are looking at any full moon for that matter, but in this case, the full moon in Aquarius, we need to understand and always remember that there's a polarity, which is the sun. The sun is giving light to the moon. So this interchangeable uh, flow of energy of Aquarius and Leo is, is happening at the same time when this full moon is in Aquarius. So Leo rules the heart, as we know, and Aquarius connects to the brain. So you can see immediately from that, Leo keeps us in the, in the center, in the present. As I said before, it's the, the daylight, day experience, reminding us of where we are right now, right here, right now. Whereas Aquarius has that tendency to live in the past or the future. Um, Leo would correlate to being, uh, to, to participating into, you know, uh, active everyday life. Uh, whereas Aquarius is the archetype that observes, it's the observer of everything, right? Uh, Leo would be magnetism and Aquarius would be electricity. A Leo is coherence because it's heart center energy based right here, right now. And Aquarius would be the interruption, um, the electrical brain uh, activity that goes on, which interrupts our any moment in time, as it were, because of the information that comes through relative to the past or relative to the future. Um, Leo is center, centering, and Aquarius would be decentering because remember, Aquarius is the multiple self. Leo is the the I. I am, I'm here, here I am, see me. <laughs> Aquarius is all these different layers of our entire being or beingness or becomingness or having been before, right? Um, so Leo is creation and Aquarius is deconstruction. Why is Aquarius deconstruction? Because its planetary ruler, which is Uranus, correlates to deconditioning which means deconstructing, right? So we come into this life fairly conditioned with past habitual patterns on a number of different levels. And we also uh, adapt new patterns relative to the current present life experiences, all of which have a purpose. However, in the long term, will keep us stifled as it were, will keep us stuck, inhibited, blocked. So, when Uranus comes along or when you have your 11th house activated or when you have uh, a full moon in Aquarius, it is always an opportunity to decondition. Deconditioning is a liberating experience. Uranus correlates to liberation, freedom, revolution, revelations, activating higher levels of consciousness, visions, ideals, dreams. Think of Aquarius from the level of it being uh, Uranus is the ruler, Saturn is the ruler of it as well, and the correlation to the 11th house, which is the house that correlates to dreams, wishes, and ideals. It's, it's the bigger picture that we hold inside us about humanity at large, about the cosmological order, and also our own personal visions, but how they mean something from a bigger picture that would contribute to humanity, not just for our own self-centered, selfish position, which is Leo. Um, so uh, Leo is the appearance, here I am, shining in my light, right? And uh, Aquarius is the disappearance. Why is it the disappearance? Because it is connected to this um, multiple these multiple layers of self. So it can it can be back in the past somewhere, it can be in the future somewhere, but it's really here, right? So it disappears off into other spheres, layers. 
dimensions, levels of consciousness. Um, Leo is now and uh, Aquarius is past and future. So Aquarius moves across time. That's, that's basically what it does. It moves across time, which is why it connects to these multiple components of ourselves. So full moon in Aquarius, square Uranus, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is material is going to be um, electrified, magnified, activated, pertaining to past, pertaining to future. And depending on how ready we are, to process what comes through will determine what we allow to come through. There is, there is a protective mechanism within our consciousness which actually correlates to Saturn, which holds boundaries in place where we will not allow certain things to come in and we will not allow ourselves to go out into certain fields as well because we can only handle what we can handle at any given time. So um, the abduction of Ganymed was basically because he was abducted into the upper world. It's a representation of consciousness, of our own consciousness, which always remains up there, if you like. It, we, we see it as up there because of uh, our physical locality, right, in the physical 3D dimension, right? But consciousness is not necessarily up there or out there. It's, it's literally within within ourselves but we we tend to have this perspective of it being somewhere out there if you like right um and also the the myth of ganymede is because he was the most beautiful uh mortal at, at his time where he was taken to the upper world it's it's kind of a representation of our own consciousness a part of our consciousness that forever remains beautiful and um, pure right and doesn't want to be subjected to or contaminated by the lower world right the earth flame which is the most uh, in esoteric astrology the earth is considered to be the the least sacred place, right? And please understand that that reference point is not saying that the earth herself is not sacred. The earth herself is completely sacred, but that particular comment refers to the human race. It is the most non-sacred place uh, for, in terms of the human collective, right? Um, so the sun is your center, which points you to the galactic center, as I said before. Aquarius brings in material that you can't see. Um, whereas the sun can see everything, right? These are the, the, the contrasts, right? The, the, the correlations between Leo and Aquarius, which we must consider when we are thinking about working with a full moon in Aquarius. Um, now, Uranus brings in disruption. It always brings disruption. Sometimes it's a, it's a welcomed disruption. Sometimes it's a traumatic disruption. It just depends on your own personal circumstances, right? Um, and so the myth also speaks to the ascension of spirit, right? Because here we have this beautiful mortal, the most beautiful that ever existed in that time, um, descend, as it were, you know, to the upper world spirit ascending right and the myth is is different he, he was abducted but when you look at the images and and the story he he wasn't resistant to the abduction right and one other very important point when it comes to the archetypes the 12 zodiac signs and the planets and so forth there's this there's this relationship between the gods and humanity, right? And there's this codependent relationship because the gods and the archetypes are expressed through us. If we didn't exist, that the gods would not exist either. So there's this mutual codependent 
connection with your life, right? We we are the living, breathing embodiment of the gods and the goddesses, right? So um, Ganymede being abducted into the upper world, who basically gave nectar to the gods, is another representation of that, the need for um, humanity, right, to be the embodiment of the frequency of the gods and the goddesses, which is what we are. We are living, breathing, walking archetypes of all the different gods and goddesses and zodiac signs, right? Um, okay, so just a few more points about um, the Leo Aquarius. So Aquarius is non-linear, which is why it travels through time. Right? It, it doesn't have this point of I'm starting here, I'm finishing here, today's today, tomorrow's tomorrow. Leo does so because Leo is centered in the here, in the now. But and, and linear time connects to the left brain as well. Aquarius connects to long-term memory body, which is Uranus, which is more equated to right brain, and it's non-linear, right? So it's a fluid movement of Aquarius into non-linear time, which is why we retrieve material from the past and connect to material towards the future. This is a really powerful full moon. If you understand these points and you can, I suppose, feel for your own self what's relevant right now, what's coming in for you and what you are ready to process. Because this is about a process. It's, it's not you know, it's not a game. It's it's a it's a very uh, purposeful and intentional, specific uh, desire, if you like, uh, conscious working towards what you really want to work through at the moment. And this Lion's Gate portal that's opened at the moment, you can imagine just how intensified all this energy is. You know, the Lion's Gate is is pouring. It's it's the, the star Sirius, which is involved in this, uh, which is the brightest star in the heavens, is just a, a, an absolute outpouring of consciousness. It's like um, Sirius and the Earth, from our perspective, during these times, particularly on the 8th of the 8th, 2020, uh, which is the most intensified period of this energy, it, it's just an outpouring of wisdom, sacred messages, sacred teachings, sacred knowledge. Um, okay. Now, because Uranus correlates to trauma and shock, when we have an experience of trauma and shock, what we, what the psyche tends to do is dissociate, right? So it'll split off, it'll lock, it'll shut something down in order to be able to cope and actually function with what's actually happened. And so that, that dissociating means that that part of us is left somewhere. It's floating around somewhere. And so when we have Uranus activated strongly in our chart, the 11th house, so we have a full moon in Aquarius, these lost components of ourself can return for us to actually heal, recover and work through. So this is the opportunity with the full moon in Aquarius. So if something does come up for you in these ways and you are actively working on healing aspects of your lost self, as it were, this is, this is a time to really work through it um, very purposefully and with a lot of uh, spiritual assistance as well. You know, it is said that when the, the lion's gate is open, there's, because the, the, the frequency of spiritual forces is so intensified and so strong, the, the aid and the support of these other realms is also uh, amplified. So if you have a relationship to angels, to specific beings that you work with and so forth, 
they are so close to you at this time. This is a very powerful time to be working with them. They're, they're right here with you now, right? Just another point to consider. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> just one final point about the myth of Aquarius regarding Ganymede. So his father was a guy called Tross. And when Ganymede was abducted, he went into this uh, intense process of grief because he lost his son, you know, the most beautiful mortal, the most beautiful son. <clears throat> but what happened was um, <clears throat> Zeus rewarded him with some gifts. He gave him some, <laughs> he gave him some magical horses that could uh, run on water and just a couple of other things. And that's, there's, there's extremely powerful symbolism to all of that as well, which I don't have time to go into now. But one thing to take away from this is that Tross, the father of Ganymede, is, is the, the Saturn component connecting to Aquarius. Um, and Ganymede is the Aquarian Uranian um, frequency. So Ganymede was the Uranus... Uh, image uh archetype uh expression right as i said before aquarius is ruled by both saturn and uranus so you may have come across this yourself i certainly have some aquarians will operate more in a saturnian way which is tross the figure of tross in, in the mythology of Ganymede, and others will operate more in an aquarian way which is uranus um <clears throat> and some will have a bit of both and, and it's it's very typical to have a bit of both right when you are having um, a full moon in Aquarius 11th house activation Aquarius planets activated you will either go through a Saturn experience which is quite limiting and quite blocked because your psyche is not ready to, to step into the Uranus field where there's multiple levels and layers of yourself pertaining to past and future. So if you're doing the Saturn thing, it might be that you're not ready for the Uranus thing, but it might also be that, that Saturn has got his grips on you because Saturn can do that. Um, and if you're doing the Uranus thing, then you are literally, literally stepping into the field of uncertainty, which a lot of people won't. But that's that's the gift of Uranus, uh, breaking us out of conditions. And by, by breaking out of a conditioned behaviour, the experience becomes a sense of freedom and liberation. Um, <clears throat> okay. So remember that, uh, you know, the full moon in Aquarius is also, it's, it's a gift for us relative to our own ideals and dreams and wishes, 11th house, right? And, it, you know, it just depends on who you are and what's going on in your life. You know, it, you, you may experience this, you know, flood of electric, electricity, as it were, you know, pouring into you with this full moon energy where material comes through. That's the perfect gift for you right now. Um, for some, it might be a more challenging experience. Remember, Uranus is squaring this full moon. So a square uh, causes friction. It's dynamic, it's active, right? It, it doesn't just flow uh, like water, like a, like a beautiful sort of rhythm of water just kind of flowing like that. It, it comes in in big, massive waves that just shock you, right? And, you know, shake you up and cause you to take action towards something, to decide upon something. Square aspects, make us get off our ass and do something okay if i could just put it in very simple layman's terms 
Whereas try and aspects, we, we feel a sense of fluidity and support in the movement throughout our journey. But if we just had trines our entire life, we would not get off our asses and do stuff. We would not attend to the difficult, challenging things that we have to attend to. That's why we need to have both, and indeed we do. Um, <clears throat> so this is square to the to the full moon. So it's it's going to be pretty pretty active and intense. Okay. Um, all right. So I might leave it there for some of the key kind of components relative to the myth connecting to Aquarius. And I'll just bring up the the chart for the full moon. And just briefly, I want to also say that, you know, we just, um, Venus is now out of the shadows. She's out of the retrograde cycle. Uh, when she was at 20 degrees of Gemini, she formed a square to Neptune. She formed three squares. The last one was just a few days ago. I did a whole write up on that on Facebook. I hope you are connected with me on, on Facebook so that you can see these posts because I don't have time always to, you know, um, sit down and do a video because I'm, I'm doing writing, I'm doing videos, I'm doing readings, I'm studying myself, researching. And um, my, my life is filled with these things on a daily basis, right? And because of this lockdown, I'm literally at home just doing these things every single day. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, the Venus uh, square Neptune has been a very important, Important transit collectively and also for us individually. Um, it, it can be a very a very challenging transit because Neptune square Venus. This is my favourite saying about a Neptune Venus relationship. The hardest goodbye is saying goodbye to an illusion. That's Venus Neptune. And that applies when we have transmitted Neptune into Venus from the personality level. Because what happens is we project the God Goddess energy onto another human being and expect them to live up to that. And no human being can. So subsequently, we are left with a sense of disappointment. And that could just be that you projected you know the god goddess sort of figure and and what i mean in what does that mean in plain english what it means is maybe you met somebody and and they seemed you know amazing that they, they, they were just the perfect person for you as it were right and it wouldn't have taken very long for that to unravel unfold and be seen in what it actually really is so what subsequently comes along with a Venus Neptune experience is a sense of disappointment because the ideals and the dreams uh, were not fulfilled. So these are some of the issues that we have potentially experienced, particularly from the personality level. However, from the higher self level, a more transcendent level, we're talking about two planets that have to do with love and beauty and harmony and divinity and source creation to all things unconditional love venus connected to the heart center as well in terms of the venus star particularly uh, neptune is the is god goddess the ultimate source truth to all things right so the venus square neptune might have just highlighted just some internal issues within ourselves relative to our own relationship with ourself as well. That there could have been uh, activation uh, points that happened for us that, where we were able to work more deeply with a greater sense of having more compassion for ourselves, you know, uh, having the ability to love our own self unconditionally. How many people can say that they love everyone around them unconditionally or even themselves? I don't think many can. We're going to be really honest. <laughs> so, you know, a Venus square Neptune can bring up all these issues as well. Now, Mars he is in his shadow at the moment um, because he's, he's started to slow down, even though he's he hasn't gone direct yet. He goes direct on the 9th of September. That's not too far away. So 
he's in Aries, he's been racing along in Aries, and he's now starting to, you know, sort of put the brakes on ever so gently uh, whilst he's preparing to step into his retrograde period. And I've done a whole video on that, so I don't want to unpack that, but we just need to be aware that <clears throat> with the current energies, this is what we're dealing with relative to Mars as well. Um, and so Mars in shadow, it does mean a slowing down of things. Um, and so everything that I explained about Mars retrograde is, we could say, <clears throat> is starting to take effect now. So just think about that and watch the video if you haven't, because there's some very useful pointers there about Mars retrograde uh, from an exoteric level <clears throat> and from an evolutionary level as well. Um, okay, so um, let me see, where am I? So yeah, check the check the position, the location in your own charts relative to this full moon. So where is it going to be in your birth chart? In other words, right? That's always um, damn it. I lost my um, yeah. I had to close. I started filming before, and um, I something happened, and things just stopped. So I had to restart. And uh, that meant, there we go. I thought I lost all my charts. Anyway, I did it a second. All right, so here's the chart for the full moon in Aquarius, which in Australia, Australian Eastern Standard Time in Melbourne is on the 4th of August, 2020, 1.58 a.m. But for most of you guys, because I know most of my viewers are from the other side of the world, uh, it's going to be you know, on the 3rd of August for you guys, right? So the degree is uh, 11 degrees and 45 minutes. There's the moon there in Aquarius and the sun directly opposite at 11 degrees and 45 minutes. So think about some of the concepts of the myth, right, of Aquarius and some of the things I shared already so that you can uh, place that relative to where the full moon is in your own chart, right? Because these are some of the themes that you will be essentially working with, right? Now you can see Uranus over here in Taurus. Don't worry about the location of everything. It will change depending on your own location. So we're not concerned with the houses in this particular chart. What we are interested in is that Uranus forms a square to the moon and to the sun. So really it's a T-square. Okay, now T squares are a very powerful aspect pattern configuration because, in, in a nutshell, what it means is that the energy of this full moon and the energy of the sun on its own, and even the moon on its own, which they're not because they're opposite each other, it's a full moon, so they're feeding back and forth into each other. The sun's giving light to the moon, Uranus is forming a square, so it's it's the key player to this full moon. The energy that's being transmitted has to come through Uranus. So there has to be some experience of awakening within our own self relative to this full moon. As I said before, it may be a welcomed um, level of information coming through or a connection to some component of yourself that uh, was previously blocked, or it can be an experience of really being able to really let something go by deconditioning a particular component of yourself. So the full moon is going to bring this to light for you. That's what full moons do. They bring it to light. You know, it's, it's a standing in a position of awareness, being able to see very, very clearly. Now, the scene doesn't mean that you automatically do what you need to. That's, that's going to be up to you. The full moon is not going to force you to do anything. You know, that's up to you what you do with what's seen, okay? But what's going to be seen is going to be material that in some way brings up something from the past for you, okay? It could be past life material, which may seem new to you, but it's not. And then on the other hand, it can also be material that points you towards your future 
from a position of feeling more free within yourself to actually make the decision you need to make. Because often um, to make a decision about something new entirely, to, to step into a, a new path, right? Um, well, first of all, we need to step into the uncertain. Uh, it's a sense of freedom and excitement, right? But we also have to make room for it as well. And, and so Uranus can create this space because it, it can actually remove things. It just depends how we deal with it. Um, the other thing is that the moon is forming a trine to the sun and a sextile, uh, sorry, Chiron, I meant to say, Chiron, you can see Chiron here in Aries, is forming a sextile to the moon and a trine to the sun. That's a favorable uh, energy that's being transmitted through this full moon as well. Because as we know, Chiron is about the wounded aspects of ourself, the parts that may have felt rejected or feel rejected. So this full moon is activating with Chiron to bring forth what potentially could be easier, more supportive in our own personal path of wanting to heal some, some part of ourselves, some part that is wounded, some part that's been rejected. It, it may be a recent experience relative to this Venus square Neptune. Maybe you uh, felt rejected by a, another person because you know, um, you perceive them in a particular way. They ended up showing you or you saw finally who they really were. And then you, you, your disappointment, so your disappointment is projected into anger. And then there's um, dialogue that goes on in such a way that you say to the other person, well, you know, um, you're very different to the way you presented initially, and then that person takes that as an attack, and so then they reject you. There's so many stories that I could, you know, conjure up in my mind relative to the symbolism of these energies. That was just one little example. Um, so Chiron's influence is supportive here. Uranus' influence is can be shocking, um, disruptive, but can be very useful working on past material and aligning us with future material, future ideals and dreams and visions. And I'll just finish up with um, just a few comments, a few more comments on the, the Lions uh, activation portal, which started on the 26th of July, goes through to about the 12th of August, as I said before. The, the highlight of that is on the 8th of August. And look, it happens every year, right? So what would be different about it this year? In my heart, what feels different about it is that because there is a collective crisis taking place. Sorry, before I unpack that, I just forgot to mention, um, there's an asteroid called Amor, which is one of the asteroids to do with love. Um, and let me just find. Um, okay, let me see if I can. There was literally just a couple of points that I wanted to mention about that. Um, because Leo being about the heart, right? And love, you know, heart, love, center. Just move that there. Uh, and the lion's gate. Uh, sorry, just. Uh, okay. Um, lion's gate, which is about the heart center, uh, spiritual. Pouring of wisdom coming through, Sirius being the brightest star in the sky, as it were, revered by the Egyptians. Uh, oh, actually, I forgot. 
here's some points about um i'll go back to more in a moment hopefully i don't forget uh, so here's the meaning to the fixed star series which is that the powerful frequency that's being transmitted through during this Lionsgate portal activation period it's an incredibly powerful star but you know anyway listen to this astrologically Sirius is a spiritual star of truly immense power although it traditionally offers success and fame it can be turbulent and dangerous in its uh, unskillful aspect Sirius is one of the stars of Hybris, uh, leading to the retribution of an appropriate nemesis positively and skillfully however Sirius raises people to the highest they can achieve and its rewards are not only material but spiritual as well Sirius is a star of magic, which isn't hocus pocus or childish fantasy, but the ability to harness hidden forces and create something new, working with subtle energies and making them manifest in the material realm. How beautiful is that? This is, this is what we have access to right now. And the full moon is happening in amongst all of this. The full moon happens just, just a few days before we have the complete opening of the lion's gate 8th of august right it offers a gift of intense even godlike creativity hence the great risks as well as the great rewards traditionally sirius was called the dog star but it is the willy desert jackal rather than the friendly domestic dog which is the truest canine symbol here the jackal is a skillful hunter keen sighted and for the ancient Egyptians represented the power to find one's way in the trackless darkness. Very interesting that point. Uh, I read this before and I thought to myself, gee, that's, that's so poignant right now, so meaningful because of the, the nature of the collective events relative to COVID-19 and relative to the fact that there's no end in sight at the moment. So it does feel a bit dark and it is dark. You know, what's happening is dark um, because the light that's beaming through is, is just clearing out, is just clearing out a lot of the darkness. So, you know, we, we can feel quite um, disheartened or dispirited with everything that's going on. I personally don't. I may have days where I feel a little bit, um, you know, a, a bit over kind of just hearing all the negativity all the time, but I, I refrain from subjecting myself to it but you know I, I do go out to go to the shops whatever and I can see you know people's behavior people's attitude people's mentality <clears throat> I don't wear a mask I, I wear a very loose scarf around me and I if I'm in very close proximity to somebody I just put the scarf a little bit over my mouth um, the whole mask issue is very controversial i don't want to talk about whether it's right or wrong um personally there's i believe that it probably doesn't even work really <laughs> um there's been no research no evidence or research from that uh, mainstream level actually saying that yes we have done this research um and here's the evidence that masks actually work, that, that nothing has been done in that way. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, okay, so getting back to just finishing up with this uh, comment here. Uh, so it says, um, <clears throat> let me just start that sentence again. The jackal is a skillful hunter, keen-sighted, and for the ancient Egyptians represented the power to find one's way in trackless darkness. Uh, this is why uh, Anubis, I think I'm pronouncing that right, um, Anubis, 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 A-N-U-B-I-S, 
the god of the spiritual seeker and occult initiate, one who could cross multiple planes of consciousness. Now, that comment is so powerful when you think about this energy of Sirius is, is activated right now. And here we have a full moon in Aquarius, which correlates to multiple planes of consciousness. Time travel. I mean, think about that connection at the moment with this full moon in Aquarius and the lion's gate, right? Very calm. Um, so then he just says, if you have serious guiding uh, your life path, you have a very mighty, subtle and magical friend at hand. Uh, you go your own way and do your own thing with Sirius. Underlying the many passions of this star, there is a deep and hard-earned understanding of how and why the universe is the way it is. In finding your way, sure-footedly, through the dark and besting any demons along the way, you gain the trust, that, sorry, you gain the truest victories of Sirius and rewards which make an even which make even the greatest earthly treasures look trivial. So this is the, I'm reading out of uh, Magic of the Stars by uh, Rod, uh, Roderick Kidston. He, he was an Australian astrologer. This is his life's work. This book, which is brilliant, is his life's work. It's, it's, a, it's such a beautiful book um, on the constellations, the fixed stars. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what we're dealing with. That's that's what's in in place for us relative to this lion's gate. Uh, the full moon in Aquarius is going to accentuate and amplify all of this. So again, it just comes back to what are we ready for right now? The the potential is is so rich. The landscape is so rich for our own uh, our own level of transcendence you know um, and we are I mean we're actually transcending anyway and the earth she's transcended at the moment she's she's actually clearing out so much stuff but we have to from the physical 3d reality we are seeing it through the eyes of the media and the restrictions of Saturn, which feels awful, and as I said before, can be quite disheartening. But um, try and uh, try and connect to to that higher self within you that gives you that broader picture, the broader understanding, um, rather than falling into Saturn fear mode, restrictive mode, and so forth. So that's what I have to share about the full moon in Aquarius and the Lion's Gate. Um, just, just electrifying, incredible timelines opening up for us. And one thing to remember is that when it comes to ascension, when it comes to expanding your own consciousness and working on your spiritual path, because we are doing it, in the most non-sacred space, which is the earth, which, as I said before, that's not a reference to the earth herself being non-sacred. It's just the density of the 3D reality which makes things appear to move very, very, very slowly. So whilst externally certain things may not change as quickly as we perhaps want them to it doesn't really matter what only really matters is what you hold vibrationally within inside your own self which is projected as your own consciousness and therefore what you see it's like i said i think i said this in the mars video um we are, you know, forced in lockdowns, restrictions, etc., etc., etc. And where is our freedom within that situation? Our freedom is within our own 
level of understanding, understanding consciousness, our own thoughts, in other words, our own perceptions. We, we can just, you know, buy into that game and buy into the anger and the projection and the division and the judgment and the blame and all that lower stuff and remain in that space and, you know, beat the, the drum to that beat or we can tune into our own freedom and free will of what we choose to expand in ourselves relative to our own awakening and our own evolution. So, love these. <laughs> and just one Beautiful energy which always sits here with me. Um, I'm very grateful. These are both gifts from two beautiful souls. I'm, I'm really very, very, very grateful and very blessed. Um, I just, uh, you, both of you know who you are. I don't want to say your names in case you're not comfortable with that, so I'll leave that out. Um, okay, guys, happy full moon in Aquarius. And just, just be, and I didn't make any comments about the collective. I suppose, um, I think uh, just, just very, very quickly before I go, collectively this full moon in Aquarius, you know, square Uranus is going to create some chaos out there um, that can, now see Uranus can, connects to earthquakes, you know, things that disrupt the earth. It can be hurricanes, it can be earthquakes, it can be fires, accidents, um, derailing of anything you know it's it's sudden unexpected um chaotic things that take place on the earth so i would expect events like that to be heightened during this time some have already started anyway there was a, a hurricane in hawaii i have a beautiful friend in hawaii she keeps me informed with what's happening there you know who you are <laughs> um so yeah uranus on on that larger sort of collective scale relative to the earth it, it is going to shake some things up there so we can expect some um unfortunately some disaster type of um events to occur as well uh, and also just one other thing i forgot to mention i guess relative to the protesting in america this is going to probably be uh, quite an eventful full moon because Aquarius rules the people. <laughs> so, you know, Aquarius and Uranus is about freedom, liberation, revolution, and just let's, you know, let's just wake up. Let's, let's shake things up and wake everybody up, right? And this is a strong desire and calling in the US, particularly around the Black Lives Matter issue, rightly so, and I guess all the controversy around Trump as well. And I'll leave that one for now. And I'll see you guys soon with more because I have got heaps more to share on uh, other matters. Much love and blessings. And thanks again for watching. See you soon. Bye.